So welcome back guys to the Urban Butchery Kitchen. Uh, so I'll just give you a bit of an explanation of the tools that we're going to be using uh, and the ingredients that we've got to make our black puddings. So firstly we've got a really nice traditional mixing bowl. We've got some nice ice cold water there. We've got some hogs casings. Uh, these will need to be washed. I'll take you through that in a moment. We've got our black pudding mix. Now the black pudding mix itself that consists of um, we've got barley in there, we've got uh, obviously dry blood in there, we've got mixed herbs. Generally we would uh, add pork fat to that but on this occasion we're, we're not going to do that. So we're going to leave the, the uh, pork fat out of it. Then we move over on to the butcher's twine and that's what we're going to tie the black puddings up with. And last but not least is what is a sausage stuffer basically great piece of kit that lovely 1920s excellent so let's crack on so first of all what we need to do is to wash the hogs casings so we'll get some nice fresh cold water going just like so now on this occasion i'm going to take the sausage skins off the sleeve this sleeve normally attaches to the end of the sausage filler and then you can run the skin straight onto the nozzle but on this occasion we don't need to do that so we're just going to take this off this sleeve so we just push it down like so till it starts to come off you must be quite careful doing this these plastic bits are quite sharp so we don't want to rip the skin so like I said this is just going into fresh clean water is the skin, we'll remove that. And what we're going to do, we'll stop the water now, and then we're just going to rinse the skins off. Now, the reason why we're rinsing the skins is because the skins are um, covered in salt for preservation. So, we need to give these a really good rinse because what we don't want is to leave residue salt with this um, because it will make the black pudding salty, and it also applies to sausages as well. Just keep doing this, keep them slip through, unraveling the knots. Like so. So we'll just take the skins out. Now this will be salty water, so we'll just pour that away. We'll run some more cold water. Just rinse that out. And then we'll put the skins back in. So. And also what you can do, I mean this is rather a, a large skin this, but if we open that up like so, because sometimes we get a little bit of residue salt inside of there, so what we can do is run that over the tap. Turn the water off, and then we just run this water down through the skin. That's that pack done. This is rather a large skin. This this is a really good, uh, really good length. So this is a job that I used to do when I was uh, 17. We used to get the skins in the big blue barrels, all salted, and we used to take them into the skin room, and we used to take the skins out of the barrels, they were sort of linked, they like five skins to a link. Then we used to rinse them all out like this, and then we used to feed them through our fingers, like so, and pull them through, like this. And then we used to put them into bowls, very similar to this, and leave them to soak in the fridge, and then they'll be ready for the day after. So, there's your uh, your hogs casings, ready to go, desalted. Okay guys, so now we're gonna uh, set to get our black pudding mix ready. As you see, here's the black pudding mix. So all the brown that you see in there is the mixed herbs and the salt and the pepper and the dried blood. We've also got barley in there, we've got some oats in there. 
mixed seasoning. Now this is a ready-made mix. Of course, when I did this back in the 80s, we used to mix our own up. And uh, a bit later on in the channel, I will do one from scratch. I've got a fantastic recipe for it, but we'll do that then. So first of all, we're gonna add this into our big mixing bowl, like so. Now, to mix this up, I've got a fork because I've broken my whisk, but that's another story. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add this cold water into here. Not all of it, just a bit at a time. Now, because I'm gonna be making like a small uh, berry or black pudding, uh, and I'm gonna be putting it through the, uh, the vintage sausage stuffer, what I want, I want this to be quite uh, a coarse mix, really. I don't want it to be too watery. So we'll add some more in. So you really just take your time with this and just uh, enjoy the moment, enjoy the process. Just keep mixing it round. Of course, in the olden days, we used to, um, used to have a big aluminium tub, which was on wheels. And we used to mix it all up in that, which was uh, just below hip level. And we used to have a big paddle. And uh, in those days, we used to mix the black pudding with um, fresh pig's blood. And I say fresh, it was the pigs were slaughtered the day before, and uh, the blood was saved. And for anybody that doesn't know, if you do uh, bleed an animal and you just leave the blood to go on its own to set, uh, then it does set and it, it uh, coagulates and basically turns into one big lump of jelly. So what we used to do after the pigs have been stuck, we used to add what we call anticoagulant into the blood. The blood was collected in milk churns, and then we'd add the anticoagulant into the milk churns, and uh, give it a good stir up, and uh, bob's your ante. Now, as I said earlier on, I'm not gonna add any um, pork fat into this, a lot of people will be thinking, ooh, why not, why no pork fat? Well, this, for this particular mix, I just thought we'd do it without, just for a change. And then when I, I come back to how I used to do it back in the 80s and we do the mix from scratch, then I'll add pork fat because there's a couple of things I'd like to show you uh, where that's concerned. So now we're getting a really nice thick consistency. Just add a little bit more water. View of it now, and of course, black pudding very nutritious, full of iron. When I used to work in the black pudding room, and uh, hopefully, I can show you a picture of the black pudding room during this video um, back in the 80s. We used to have one of these for breakfast every morning back in the days when management of the food factory didn't mind if you had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And it was wonderful. The first mix out of that boiler, the first black puddings, was absolutely beautiful. So if we look at the consistency now, we're sort of getting there now. Just keep mixing that up. I mean, to be honest, I'm dying to get my hands in there and mix it up, but in the um, interest of hygiene, I won't do that. So I think we can just add a tiny bit more water and then it'll be ready for putting into the, uh, the hogs casings. Of course, if you were to do black puddings properly, um, black pudding berries, you wouldn't be using hogs casings. You'd be using beef runners. When I do the uh, the next black pudding video, I will use beef runners and that will give us a proper sized berry. But this is really just to give you a basic understanding of how the black pudding mixtures mixed up and uh, how to actually tie the black puddings. I mean, if we can get enough out of this, maybe we can link a few. We'll see how it goes. Okay, now I think that's a wonderful consistency, that. As you see, you don't want it too sloppy. Now when we do fill the skins up, uh, we'll be making sure that, actually I will have to touch my water. We'll be making sure that we don't overfill them because if they're too tight, then they'll burst the skins. And also when you cut them, they'll burst in the pan as well. Well, that's one thing I forgot to mention. We are gonna cook these up as well. So maybe even have them for breakfast tomorrow morning. So there we go guys, there's your black pudding mix, and now let's get ready for the stuffer. Okay, so the next step, what we're going to do, we're going to put the skins onto the nozzle of the stuffer. 
So what we do, we find the end, like this. And this is exactly the same with um, sausages as well. So we get two fingers inside of there and open it up. And then we get some water down into the skin. Then what we do, we get the nozzle, place that over the end. Another little urban butchery hack, if you wet this as well. And then start to put the skin onto the nozzle. And I've got to say that's going on lovely that. So we want to get as much as we can on. There we go. So that's the skin onto the nozzle. So now we're going to put our mix into the stuffer. So we just get a spoon like this and we just let it drop into there like so. And what we need to do as well is to push it down to make sure that there's no air gaps. And this applies to any sausage machine, whether that's electric or manual. Of course, if you haven't got a sausage stuffer, um, don't worry. Um, you can use, obviously use the, um, the skins, but you can use a funnel. Uh, you can cut off the top of a plastic bottle and put the skin over onto the nozzle. That's uh, not a problem. You can make your mix a little bit wetter and try and fill it by hand. A little bit harder, but you know, these must. So, I'm just going to take a little bit out of that because we're now going to attach the plunger. There's a plunger. Of course, this is wood. You wouldn't get away with using this now, but I do like traditional tools. So, now we're going to just screw that onto there like so and there you have it so we've already got some skin put on the end there and what we're going to do we're just going to push this now just make sure that some mix comes out the end like so just get rid of the mix and then we're going to put the skin over the end like this and then we're ready to stuff baby so here we go guys so if you remember, I made sure that that tube was full of the mix, so that we have no air bubbles inside of there and inside of there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to tie a little knot on the end. You always tie the knot after you've checked. That's it. I'll put that onto there. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to push with the plunger, like so. And like I said, we don't want these to come out. Better. We don't want this to come out with not enough in it. And we also want it to be a little bit slack like that as well. Now even though this mix is still quite soft, it's still quite hard going pushing this the plunger down, but we're getting that. Beautiful colour. a little bit. And that's one lot done. So we'll just repeat the process now. Beautiful, very satisfying this. Especially doing it with this. Wonderful. Oh. 
so here we go guys, the, the last part. Pump it in there. The last bit. And there we go. So what I'll do. Bit of health and safety. Instead of using a knife, just use some scissors. What we're gonna do, we're gonna tie up a knot in that just for the moment, just to stop all the black puddings coming out. And we'll just get that into a little circle. And there you have it. That's your black puddings all filled out. Now the next step is to tie them up. So we'll just move them to one side. So now I'm going to show you how to traditionally string a Lancashire black pudding. So we're going to change these into berries. And like I said, we would normally use uh, beef runners um, for this, for the skins. But uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm using the hogs casings. So we place the string down there. So what we do, just unravel this this way. What we do, we make a black pudding, like so. Okay, and we get the string, wrap it around three times. Security knot, anybody wants to learn how to do a security knot, look at my other videos on butcher's tying. So now, turn over once, twice, once, twice. Once, twice, once, twice. Once you get good at this, you can do this just once. And then we do the security knot on the end like so. Cut our string. That's one lot. Of black puddings tied. What I'm gonna do with these, I'm gonna make them in to sausages. So we'll just put a little knot on, twist, through, through, twist, and we'll be doing a video on this um, later on, we go down through the channel, and then link, squeeze, through, link, and then through. So we've got some black pudding sausages there. And what I'm gonna do with this last one, it's rather long, I'll twist that through, and link that through there. So there we have black pudding sausages. We make sure we get any residue off the skin of the outside before we cook them. Otherwise you'll have bits of uh, black pudding floating all over your water. Make sure you're nice and clean. We'll just put them to one side. Do exactly the same with the black pudding sausages. For them, aren't they beautiful? So there you have it guys. Black puddings in two ways. We've got black pudding sausages. And we've got traditional Lancashire black pudding berries and they're beautiful in the next step i'm going to show you how to cook them i'm going to show you how to make them black
do, we get the water nice and hot so it's boiling and then pick up the black puddings and then we just place them in there. Now what happens now, as you can see, that the water stopped bubbling. So it's because the black puddings are so cold so it's cooled down the water. So what we need to do now, we need to bring it back to the boil and then as soon as it comes back to the boil, what we'll do, we'll turn it off and then we'll just leave it for about 40 minutes. So it's a little bit steamy now, but you can see that the black puddings have been brought back to the boil. So now we're going to turn that off now. And we're just going to let them cook in there for about 40 minutes. The thing is, if you bring it back to the boil and leave it to carry on boiling, what will happen then is that the skins of the black pudding will all burst and then all the inside of the black pudding will just come out into the water and look a right mess. So we'll just leave it like that for 40 minutes. And I'll catch you in a moment. Hello my little loves. Now then, let's have a look what's happening with these black puddings. So as we see, just take the lid off. They're looking handsome. Just get a wooden spoon, just stir them around a little bit. So this has been about 40 minutes now. And what generally happens when they're ready, they actually float to the top. And that's how you can generally tell that they're cooked. Apart from the time, of course. Uh, if you used to do this at home, uh, I would probably recommend that you uh, use a thermometer. Uh, just make sure you've got uh, you know, a good internal temperature. You know, 70 odd degrees, something like that. So we just stir it around. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take these bad boys out. So we'll just use the spoon and then just gently get underneath them. And I can feel that they're really firm anyway, so and then we'll just get them out. Look at them, and they're beautiful, beautiful Lancastrian black puddings. Just have a closer look at them. And they're beautiful. Sorry about the steam there, but absolutely beautiful. I remember in one of the shops that I used to work at in uh, Chorley, what they used to do is they used to uh, cook these up and then they would take them into the shop and make sure that all the smell went around the shop and then everybody would start buying them. Really lovely. Now, as I said, and as you can see, is that these black puddings are brown. Now, a black pudding is called a black pudding because it's black. And now we're going to go and do the process which turns them black. So here we have it guys, we've got our cooked black pudding and we've got our secret ingredient. So what we're going to do, we've got some, uh, some boiling water there, so we're going to add our secret ingredient. We're going to give it a good stir up, then we're going to wait till this boils again. And then the alchemy starts. Okay guys, here we go. So our water's uh, boiling away now. And we've got to be very careful here that you just go in and hopefully you'll be able to see the change. As you can see, they're just going black now. So we just stir this round. If we leave this in too long, what will happen is that the chemicals that are in here will melt away all the skin and then again everything will burst out and they'll be ruined so I just give them a quick stir but I think you can see there that they've changed colour already okay I think that's long enough I'm going to turn the heat off and then get the black puddings out. Just look at those beauties. Aren't they beautiful?
Well, my little darlings, I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed doing it. If you did, then please press the subscribe button. Also, press the bell icon and then you'll be notified of future videos. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, then please follow the links below. And I'll catch you next time on the Urban Witchery channel. Skills for life.